Welcome to our second episode of Fluid Mechanics Tutorial, and this is a boring introductory clip about units. The exam won't independently ask you about units, but better understanding of units help you to gain some engineering sense. We shall state both the quantity and the units in each numerical answer, and even in each step. You may think this is just tedious. Why shall we care about units? Shown in the list are the four reasons. In this video, we are just talking about the first three. Since deriving relations with units is out of syllabus and it is in chapter 7, but that is interesting to know. I will make an extra video about that if I have time. So back to our list. The first one is just obvious. In science and engineering, anything without units is meaningless. As you all know, 1 gram and 1 ton are not the same. Now we do a unit conversion. 1 ton equals 1 ton. And each ton has 1000 kilogram. And each kilogram has 1000 grams. So each ton has 1 million grams. Now we move on to the second reason. But this is a bit strange. Can we learn some physics by simply looking at units? The answer is yes. Just take a look at this example. If we multiply these two terms by mass, then this becomes mv squared divided by 2, and this one becomes mgh, which are kinetic and gravitational energies respectively. So, these two guys originally must related to energy per unit mass. Let's assume the equation makes sense. Since the three terms can be added together, then the first term must have the same units with the other two terms. So the first term must also be energy per unit mass. We conclude that the whole equation is indeed energy balance in unit mass basis. In fact, this equation is called a lonely equation, and you will learn it in chapter 3. Although it is derived using force balance, it can also be understood as conservation of energy. In fact, you have learned about the first term in thermodynamics. Since density is mass per volume, and specific volume is volume in each unit mass, then we have rho equals 1 over V. If we rewrite the first term, it becomes PV, which is the flow work you have learned in thermodynamics. Let me just talk about units that we use in this course before we move on to the third usage of units. This table lists some common physical quantities. Since this course is a mechanics course, we certainly concern ourselves with things like electric current and temperature. So everything in this course can be expressed with three basic dimensions. Mass, length, time, or force length, time. Let's do a quick example. To describe force in MLT system, we may think of F equals MA. We recall that acceleration is the double time derivative of displacement. A equals D squared X over DT squared. So just this, take this guy as length and take this guy as time. So we have F as the same dimension as mass times length divided, divided by time squared, which is same as below. To express m in FLT, we simply fold things around and get mass the same units as force time squared divided by length. And this guy is listed in here, which is same as our result. Now we can continue to discuss the third use of units. That is to verify your formula makes sense or not. Every formula shall have consistent units on both sides. Let's see if the divergence theorem that you have learned last year makes sense or not. In this course, this vector 3 equals UVW denotes the velocity field. This dot product here can be written as V dot N equals V N cosine theta. And this goes to 1. So this dot product just have the same unit as the magnitude of the velocity, which has unit of length divided by time. The term ds 
is a small area, so it has dimension of length squared. So we conclude the left hand side has dimension of length to the power 3 divided by time. For the right hand side, in the right hand side, the divergence of the velocity vector is defined as so each of this term has length divided by time on the numerator and is further divided by length so it has dimension of 1 divided by time and this term is small volume so it has dimension of length to the cube so we conclude that the right hand side has also dimension of length to the cube divided by time and that is equals to the left hand side so the divergence theorem makes sense in chapter 8 you will learn about the importance of dimensionless number in fluid mechanics so our final example is about the most important dimensionless number that you are going to learn in chapter 8 and that is called the Reynolds number its definition is given here and our task is to verify that whether the Reynolds number is really dimensionless you all know about the units of the first three, but you may not know about the last one. So let's just write the first three down first. And the second one is length divided by time. And the last one is of course length. Viscosity is an important fluid property and its dimension is mass divided by length and time. Then it is easy for us to check that the Reynolds number is really dimensionless. So, Copy each down and divide it by mass, length, time. And this cancels out. The length cancels out and the time also cancels out. So we conclude that the dimension of the Reynolds number is really equals to a constant. So that is all about this video. We have just covered MLT and FLT system. And we have gone through the first three reasons about why shall we care about units. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to ask us any questions and give us any feedback in the comments below.